Hello, Indy River Estates. It is such a pleasure to be with you. Uh, I certainly wish that we could do this in person, but alas, as times as they are, hope everyone's doing well. It's interesting to think about how you know so many people I care about are all in one central location, and uh, it's interesting, of course, that you are becoming the Fort Knox of toilet paper, which is great because that's going to be the new currency, apparently, after this time is over. So uh, I hope you're doing great. We're going to do some piano stuff for you today, um, some classical little jazz. And the first thing I'm going to open with is a two-part invention, number eight by Bach. Inventions were the precursors to what we call etudes, and etudes were developed as pieces of music that meant to teach exercises for pianists. And so this invention has two distinct melodic patterns that you'll hear coming in both hands equally throughout the whole piece. It's short and it's, uh, it's, it's really enjoyable. So here's the two-part invention in F by Bach. Bach did not have a piano like this. Uh, once they developed uh, cast iron, they were able to create this grain piano because they were able to have enough tension on the strings to get much higher. Bach wrote these for, for harpsichord and organ, and they didn't really have touch sensitivity, and so there's very little dynamic in this Baroque period. Most of it is what we call terrace dynamics, either it's loud or soft. So that's an interesting thing, of course. And up next, we have the opposite, Chopin. Raindrop Prelude. So Chopin is generally considered to be uh, the poet of the piano. Um, there were such a wide variety of things that he did, all the way from Polish national songs to, to singular creations, trying to determine all the different tonalities that the piano had to offer. And in this particular case, the Raindrop Prelude, uh, he has a t particular note that plays the entire time, uh, kind of emphasizing the idea of what the raindrop would be. And so this is the Raindrop Prelude in D-flat by Chopin.
Chopin Raindrop Prelude in D flat. Wonderful piece of music. Okay, up next we have a Passacal or Passacalia by Handel. Uh, Passacalia originally came from Spain, and it comes from the Spanish words pasar, which means to walk, and cale, which means street. And, and so a Passacalia was a particular type of piece meant, again, for a certain type of dance, as many of these were back in the day, gavats and rondos and all these kind of different forms really were dance music. This is no different. Uh, this particular Passacalia has a repeating thematic figure that is almost treated in a variation sense. Uh, and you should pick it up real quick. It's one of those simple things, almost like our version of pop music these days. You have a very simple, what we call a hook. Back then it was a, what we call a melisma. Uh, and so this is very uh, melismatic. format, as soon as you finish something the entire way it is written originally, you're supposed to then go back and repeat, and this time is an opportunity for improvisation. Baroque was really one of the first moments in which what we now consider jazz, the idea of improvised music, came about. So I'm going to do the same section. I'm going to do half of it, and now it's going to be improvised with ornamentation and various other thematic and rhythmic elements. Thank you. 
next, we have a piece by Debussy. So <clears throat> once you come out of the uh, Baroque into the classical era, there are really uh, rigid structures set into place called the common practice period. And there were very detailed infrastructures for formats for the pieces. And there were certain things you had to do, certain cadential rules and regulations, voice leading, all kinds of very restrictive things. This was Mozart's heyday. Uh, coming out of that into the Romantic period, we started to loosen some of these restrictions. And then it, we really have an interesting thing happen with what's called the Impressionist period. Uh, a lot of uh, art forms tend to change together. So when you think of Impressionist art, it's also the same for music. And so one of the things that Debussy tried to do as one of his main thrusts was, was identify colors of music and then identify ways in which music could be expressed uh, other than just for its own sake. So he did a, you know, an example of this would be uh, his uh, Stampy set, uh, which is French for prince. And so he had three prints that he had in his house that he identified and then he wrote music that reflected what he thought they sounded like, the way they looked. How did that sound? This is another example of that taken from a poem. Uh, this is called The Maid with the Flaxen Hair. And so the poem is as follows. On the lucerne midst flowers in bloom, who sings praises to morning? It is the girl with golden hair and the beauty with lips of cherry. For love in clear summer sunlight has soared with the lark and sung now. Your mouth has such colors divine, my dear, so tempting to kisses. On grass, in bloom, talk to me, please, girl with fine curls and long lashes. For love in clear summer sunlight is soared with the lark and sung now. Do not say no, cruel maiden, do not say yes. Better to know the long-lasting gaze of your eyes and your rosy lips, O oh my bell. For love in clear summer sunlight has soared with the lark and sung now. Farewell, you dear, farewell, you hares, and the red partridge. I want to stroke the gold of your tresses, smothering lips with my kisses. For love in clear summer sunlight has soared with the lark and sung now. So Debussy took this poem, and he decided to write something that he thought the poem sounded like. So there's going to be some similar meter, uh, metrical poems, of course, like iambic pentameter and some of these other kind of things. This will be present. Um, so here we go. This is The Maid with the Flaxen Hair.
Staying with the French a little bit, this is the Skater's Waltz. Uh, and this is a very interesting, there's a very famous park in Paris, whose French name I will not attempt to butcher at the moment. And uh, there was a, a fellow named Emile Waldteufel, and he wrote, a this is also during the Impressionist period, right? The same kind of idea of, okay, what does it sound like to view the people skating? And so he wrote this based upon what he considered to be the skater's poise into a regular skate, um, and he thought the cadence would fit kind of a waltz. So this is the skater's waltz. switch over to a little bit of jazz now. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is uh, a nice uh, Jerome Kern Oscar Hammerstein piece called All the Things You Are. This is from a very little known musical called Very Warm for May. And this is All the Things You Are.
another jazz piece we're going to do is a great Duke Ellington, Ellington chart. Don't get around much anymore. So everybody knows this theme, right? And everybody knows the lyrics. Well, well this is very interesting because Duke Ellington first wrote this for his orchestra, and the name of the piece was called Never No Lament. Uh, and it was on an album. He recorded it with his orchestra. And then uh, there was a lyricist that got a hold of it and added the lyrics. And that became a very successful hit. And they decided to go ahead and change the title to fit the lyrics. And obviously it's now in the annals of history. So here's Don't Get Around Much Anymore. Okay, it's been a delight playing for you, as always. I'm imagining all of your faces out here, and we're going to end with a great piece by Jean Sibelius, famous Finnish composer, of course, and this is his theme, Finlandia. The very interesting story behind this piece, of course, is that uh, during some of the uh, Russian oppression uh, for Finland, they were trying very, very hard to come out from that, and uh, as, as many times was the case, uh, both for a lot of, you know, even Russian composers, too. They would uh, secretly do things to stand against the, the oppressive governments of the moment. Um, and so Finlandia was written specifically to be a national song, and he had to change the title five or six times, pretending it was for other things, but everybody in the, in the Finnish community, of course, knew that this was kind of their, their song uh, of resistance, as it were. So this, this is still a very important national song for Finland and um, has been transcribed and done all kinds of things with the rest of us. So this is Finlandia. Again, thank you so much for uh, all that you are and thank you very much for um, allowing me to play for you even remotely. And here's Finlandia. <laughs>